Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be looking at the replacement of a blower motor and blower motor resistor on this 2004 Dodge Stratus. Now, I looked at this car at the end of last year and um, the issue was that only the high fan speed was working for the uh, climate control. So in my experience, it's always told me that the blower motor resistor is usually on its way out. I'm gonna take another look at it now. Um, it looks like now we've lost all the fan speeds. So you can see we have nothing there. So I'm hoping it's still just an issue with the blower motor resistor. We don't have something else going on. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and start diving into it and we'll take a look and uh, see what we got going on. As always, if you find this video helpful, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. First step is going to be to remove this uh, panel on the underside of the dashboard on the passenger side. So once that's out, pull the panel down the back side, slide it towards the front of the car, pull it out of the way. So now with that cover off, we can get under the dash here and you can see right here we have our connector for the blower motor resistor and then right here is our blower motor. To disconnect the blower motor resistor connector, there is a locking tab up on the back side here that you have to release. This one's actually pretty stubborn, but I already know from checking this car out previously that this connector is melted to the body of the uh, blower motor resistor. So I'm not gonna bother trying to disconnect it right now. Uh, instead, what I'm gonna do is take the, I think there's one or two screws up in there that hold the uh, blower motor resistor in place. So I'll do that, pull it down, and then we can get a closer look at it. So you can see our blower motor resistor is pretty rusty. It looks like it's an old one, um, probably what caused it to fail. You can see there's actually part of it breaking off right there. Um, so basically what I think happened is, I don't know if there was some moisture that got in there, uh, rusted it out, created high resistance and just kind of burned it out. Um, could be due to age, could be due to uh, water intrusion of some kind. Uh, if you see something like this, always make sure there's no obvious signs of water intrusion getting into your HVAC box there. I don't see anything going on here, so I'm just going to chalk it up to being an old blower motor resistor. But here you can see that uh, connector lock on the back side. So we're going to try to pry that off, see if we can't get this apart. So I was finally able to pry the connector off of the blower motor resistor. And you can see here that we've got a melted terminal. I think that one might actually be the power supply coming into the uh, blower motor itself. So melted on both sides, looks like it bubbled up. I had to actually pry this area apart to get it off. So what I've done is Dorman makes a kit, um, includes a replacement connector with a bunch of heat shrink uh, butt connectors, and then your new blower motor resistor. Um, pretty cheap option, available on Amazon. Uh, I think that's probably the best way to go. Had some pretty good reviews. Uh, the only thing I noticed when I was looking at it is that the instructions mention you have to modify the opening up in the box there to fit the new resistor. So I don't know how true that is. Uh, I never run into that before. So we're going to take a closer look as we go on and uh, see if we really need to do that. On a side note, I've always given my customers the option um, to replace their blower motor whenever we do a blower motor resistor. Um, it, usually it's cheap insurance blower motors depending on the vehicle don't usually cost a whole lot The one for this one, I think was about 30 to 40 bucks um, Basically what happens is uh, as the blower motor ages uh, It can draw more current through the blower motor resistor and the related wiring And there's possibility you can go through all this trouble replace the resistor and then burn out a new resistor if you have an old motor That's uh, drawing too much current. So I always like to do uh, Kind of a combo deal on those replace both of them. It's up to you and so I think it's cheap insurance, but we'll be uh, replacing the blower motor here first, I think, or at least pull it out and then we'll see uh, what kind of modifications we have to do to that box. So it looks like I'm gonna get lucky here. Uh, when I put the old blower motor resistor up next to the new one, they actually look like they're pretty much the same size, if not the same blower motor resistor. So that's telling me I shouldn't have to modify that opening at all. 
like the uh, doorman instructions tell me. So I'm looking at that opening there and uh, I'm seeing some kind of plastic burrs up there, some filings. Uh, it looks like someone's taken a rotary tool to that opening to open it up, which they recommend in the instructions. So if for some reason you're still running the uh, OE or the stock blower motor resistor and you have an aftermarket one that's a different size or doesn't fit, pretty much all you have to do is get up in there with some sort of knife or a rotary tool and just kind of widen out the opening to make room for the new one. So I'm going to go ahead and install the new blower motor resistor up into the opening here. And remember you want the, uh, the lock side there for the connector facing away from you or towards the front of the car. So it fits up in there pretty snug. And we gotta go ahead and get our two eight millimeter screws. We'll start those by hand, make sure we don't strip anything out. Gonna snug those up. You don't want to go too tight and risk breaking any of the plastic. But that's up in there pretty good. So now we'll take a look at this blower motor here and then uh, I'll show you how to rewire this connector. The blower motor should be pretty straightforward. It looks like there's three eight millimeter screws all the way around. Um, I'm not sure if we're gonna have enough room to clear this piece of the dashboard, but uh, let me go ahead and pull those three screws out and we'll see uh, if we have enough room to sneak it out. Of course, before I do that, there is a wiring connector towards the door side of the vehicle here on the passenger side. So let me release that. another wire over on the other side here so we can't pull it down out of the way completely but that's enough at least we can potentially get the blower motor down and out of the way sneak our blow motor down and out of the car. So now would be a good time if you have a lot of excess debris built up inside the opening there to take a shop vac or some sort of vacuum to clear it all out. But uh, this opening doesn't look too bad. I might have a cabin air filter that's uh, preventing any debris from getting in there. So we're gonna go ahead and feed our new blower motor up into the car. Wiring harness in the back, up into the hole there. There we go. They have this nice little tab here you can line up with the uh, case on the HVAC housing. I've got wiring harness blocking me, that's what my problem is. There it is. Now the only thing I'll point out that's different on this new blower motor is they've included this little pigtail for the wiring connector instead of having it uh, plug in directly into the body of the motor. So not a big deal. It just uh, plugs right into our factory harness there. The big thing you want to make note of is make sure all these mounting ears where the where my <laughs> where the bolts go into are all in the same place as the old one. So. Everything is looking right there. I'm gonna go ahead and zip up all three of these screws. And we'll go from there. All 
Now part of the dormant kit that comes with that blower motor resistor also includes our new connector. And then uh, it's also pretty cool then to include these uh, heat shrink butt connectors. So we are gonna go ahead and wire this in place. Um, as you can see, all the, wiring, uh, all the wires are the same color. So what I'm gonna do is uh, wire these one at a time so I don't get them confused. Uh, before we reconnect or resecure the harness here, uh, these two loops up on the underside of the blower motor, might as well leave them undone. This gives you more room to work with in the wiring harness. So they give you a ton of extra wiring on this new connector. I don't really need all of that. Um, I'm probably gonna cut half of it off still give myself a little bit of wiggle room and then um, we're gonna make sure that we cut the factory harness uh, about the same length straight across here. All right so you can see I've cut a good amount of the wiring off from the uh, new harness and then I went ahead and stripped the wiring back. Um, you kind of want to match it up to fit about halfway into the butt connector uh, looking at the, the inside part there before it flares out. So that's going to give us the maximum amount of wiring inside the connector without pushing through to the other side and enough to uh, really lock in there once we bite down on the uh, butt connector there and make sure that's going to stay in place. So while we have this connector um, out of the car still, I'm going to go ahead and crimp all of the connector side for the butt connector. We don't want to heat it yet because we run the risk of uh, potentially heating up the other side before we have a chance to connect it. So I'll go ahead and crimp those on. Now when you're crimping these, if your wire uh, cutters have a bare and insulated side, uh, here the one with the little dimple down there is the bare side. I'm going to use the one next to so it's insulated because we don't want to crush this heat shrink material too much. It basically allows you to get a good bite on there to hold the wire in place without totally destroying the uh, insulation and the heat shrink material on the outside of it. So I'll do it on two spots here and right next to each other. Nice and snug without going overboard. It gives us a nice secure bite on the wire. So if you want to be extra careful during this next step, uh, when you're rewiring everything, you can go as far as disconnecting the battery. Um, like I said earlier, I'm going to do these one at a time so we don't get these uh, wires confused, especially if you cut them all off and they all get you know mixed around. You could take a photo or video beforehand if you wanted to uh, for reference. But I think I'm just going to go ahead and uh, do these one at a time, and uh, that way I can keep track of each wire. I'm not going to disconnect the battery, but at least I can, uh, you know, I think this one's a power supply wire, so I can hold that one and make sure I'm not uh, going to short it out or ground it on anything. You also want to make sure that you cut far back enough uh, to prevent any, uh, any damage. I know I see the heat shrink um, closest to the connector here. It looks like it's seen some thermal damage. Um, so I want to make sure there's no corrosion, no melting or anything of the uh, insulation. This uh, coming this far back with it looks pretty good. So again, we're on this far right side of the connector. So I'm going to grab our far right wire. I've stripped back enough that it's fitting about halfway into that butt connector. So I'll go ahead and crimp that in place. That's nice and snug. So there's one down, four to go. So I have the new connector all crimped into place here. Uh, even use the old connector as kind of a reference point to make sure all of our wires are still in the same spot. Uh, just a word to the wise on some of these wires, these three wires on the left side of the connector are a smaller gauge than the other two. Um, so you might need to spend a little extra time, give them an extra crimp or uh, get a little aggressive with the uh, gripping tool just to make sure that they don't go anywhere but uh, give them a nice little tug make sure they're in place um, issue is the smaller wires they don't always 
clamp down inside the butt connector there like they should. So uh, you might have to mangle the uh, insulation there a little bit. It's not the end of the world, uh, but at least they're in place and they're nice and snug. So next thing is to uh, activate or heat shrink these connectors. Um, you could use a lighter. I don't like using a lighter on these because first of all, we're in a car. Um, not the safest thing. Uh, I like using a heat gun personally because I think it gives you a little more control over the heat and uh, there's a lot less chance of damaging uh, the heat shrink on here. So I'm going to go ahead and use a heat gun on each one of these, uh, get these wrapped up and then we can go ahead and re-secure the wiring harness on the underside of the blower motor, plug it in and give it a give it a test. So I have all five of these wires crimped and the heat shrink. Um, I don't love how the heat shrink was working with these smaller wires. Uh, I think if I was doing this project again, I might use uh, a bare uh, butt connector and then just slide over my own sleeve of a heat shrink tubing. Um, I think the, the connectors they gave you is a nice thought, but it's just a little too big in diameter for the uh, gauge of wire. I mean, it still works out okay, um, but you might get a better connection if you just use some bare ones and then use your own heat shrink tubing so i'm gonna go ahead and then uh some of these smaller wires you can see like this one the uh insulation kind of wore through i'm gonna go ahead and wrap all five of them in electrical tape just as like an extra precaution and uh, then we can reinstall everything And do our bush, best to push this wiring harness up out of the way. I might actually zip tie it to the other harness here just to keep it from dragging on that uh, panel that goes underneath. Great, so now that all the new parts are installed, let's check and make sure that everything's working okay. There you have it. Looks like all of our fan speeds are working. Everything's uh, working the way it should be. I'm going to triple check everything, make sure that the uh, AC and heat are coming out. Uh, we're getting a good temperature range, but it looks like this one's all set. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys. Uh, until next time, take care.